What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Over the past week, I've recorded five charging sessions on my Rivian R1T, going all the way from 3% to 85% on a couple different charging hardware options. And I think the results will actually surprise you quite a bit. So stick around and we're gonna analyze these charging results in fine detail. As I mentioned, over the past week or so in my Rivian R1T, I've actually gone to four different charging stations and recorded five charging sessions, uh, recording both the charging screen and the vehicle screen showing the kilowatt uh, charge rate, the kilowatt hour added, all that fun stuff. And the hardware that I chose to use for this testing uh, is a bit across the board. So I used an ABB uh, HPC at Electrify America. So that's a 150 kilowatt unit that will deliver 350 amps. It's actually 175 kilowatt, but Electrify America only rates it as 150 kilowatt. Uh, we also used an ABB Terra 184, which can do 400 amps. That was at the Circle K in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, and then we went all the way up to Statesville, North Carolina. We tested on an Electrify America Signet 350 kilowatt unit. That can deliver a full 500 amps. And then last but not least, we did two sessions, uh, two different sessions on an EVgo Delta 350 kilowatt unit that can deliver up to 540 amps. Um, and what I did also to add to this charging test, in addition to the three to 85% test that I mentioned, I actually recorded a middle of the curve video as well on that 350 kilowatt Delta 500 amp unit. Um, because as you'll see, the vehicle will actually thermal throttle in the middle of the curve. So I wanted to see a bit of a theoretical, what is the fastest uh, this vehicle could charge if it wasn't thermal limited. And this was the best I could do without it being, I don't know, negative 20, but that could also be an interesting result as well. But before we get started, if you're new here, welcome. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And for this charging curve analysis, I'm gonna be put away to the side. We need all the screen real estate we can get to show the charging information because I'm going to show you four charging sessions for the entire recording. And then I'm gonna add in that fifth one in the middle of the curve, as I mentioned. So if you're on a mobile device, hopefully you can read things. You're definitely gonna up the resolution to the highest setting in the YouTube mobile app, hit the gear in the upper right. Uh, and if you're on a computer, tablet, whatever, definitely recommend putting it full screen so you can see all the things going on here. Uh, and you may wanna pause this throughout, uh, maybe watch it all the way through so you see my comments and then watch it again and pause throughout and you can kind of compare where each charging session is at. So without further ado, let's get started on this charge curve analysis. I'm gonna be watching it with you. And before I start the charge recordings for you to watch, uh, I'll just go around and explain which one is which here. So we're gonna be starting in the upper left that is a Signet 350 kilowatt, 500 amp. This is an Electrify America unit. And this particular one is in Statesville, North Carolina. Upper right, we have the ABB HPC 175 kilowatt unit that can do up to 350 amps. And that is an Electrify America 150 kilowatt unit that is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Down below on the lower left, we have an ABB Terra 184. So that is a 180 kilowatt rated unit can do 400 amps and that's installed at the Circle K in Rock Hill, South Carolina. And last but not least, lower right, we have a, a Delta 350 kilowatt, 500 amp uh, unit, and that's installed by EVgo. That is in Tuckasegee, I think is how you say it, uh, but that's in Charlotte, North Carolina near the airport. And then that's also the same unit that we're going to be using for the middle of the curve recording that will show up on the middle of the screen there for you. And without further ado, let's get started here. As I mentioned, I recorded from three to 85%. Uh, however, I clipped all the footage to start at 5% exactly when it tripped over to 5%, just to make sure in case it was in the middle of 3%, that can actually throw it off a little bit, especially on such a large battery. Uh, percentage is not necessarily the most accurate when you have 135 kilowatt hour battery in the vehicle. So that way it rounded it. So each one is ramping up here. Uh, the Signet's at 195 kilowatt, ABB is at 147, uh, ABB in the lower left, 157, and lower right, 200 kilowatt. Uh, so what you're going to see as these vehicles are starting to charge, they're keeping very similar pace, 
Uh, however, all of them are actually going to be ramping up in power as the uh, state of charge goes up because when the vehicle is limited by the charge current available on the charge charging unit, uh, it will actually ramp up as the vehicle pack voltage goes up. Uh, don't mind this flickering of the screens as it hits 30 miles estimated range. I have to flick it into show and tell mode so that the screen stays on. Uh, so, so far so good. Uh, the two 350 kilowatt units are keeping pretty close, but the Delta is doing slightly better. Uh, the ABB uh, 180 and 150, they're both keeping pretty close here. And the Terra 184 actually triggered the battery cooling message the soonest. Uh, it's pulling 163 kilowatt and the Delta is doing that as well. That's at almost 210 kilowatt. Uh, the Signet is now showing it. And then we probably will have the ABB 150 show it in just one moment here. Uh, so far keeping pretty darn close. We're widening the gap a little bit. The lowest one is the ABB 150 that's at 22% and the lower right 27%. Uh, still no cooling message on the 175, 150 unit in the upper right. Uh, but so far, again, within a couple percent here, so it's within 5%, but the gap is actually widening a little bit uh, between the ABB in the upper right and the Delta in the lower right. Uh, and now we finally have that cooling message showing up on the ABB 175. Uh, so far, charging is looking pretty good. And actually now the uh Signet 350 kilowatt and the Delta 350 kilowatt, both of them are charging slower than either of the uh, 175 or the 180. Here we have that middle of the curve session added in. Uh, the timer on that one is since the beginning of that clip starting at 37%. And you can really see that that's at 213 kilowatt. And still the ABB 175 and 180 are still pulling more power than either of the 350 kilowatt units in the lower right and upper left. Kind of crazy that that's the case, but it's just a matter of thermals for the battery. 45% um, in the lower right, but that middle session is just kicking along 218 kilowatt. And now it's ramping down as that battery is cooling. We don't have a message yet, uh, but we'll probably have that pretty soon. So far, uh, again, still very close, uh, about as close as you'd expect, but the slower units are actually doing better. And the upper left, the Signet is actually ramping back up. We're back up to 140 kilowatt. Lower right is back up to 140 and change. Uh, but the ABB 175 is still at 163 kilowatt. Uh, ABB Terra 184 is ramping down as well. Uh, thermal limited there, but man, the ABB 175 upright Electrify America 150 unit uh, we're just now getting that ramp down at 53%, which is to be expected. That's when it gets below that 150 kilowatt, just in the charging curve. Um, and that's actually very close. It caught up almost to the 350 kilowatt units. So it's at 56%, uh, the 64% on the middle there in the middle curve. So that's adding just a ton of power throughout the middle of the curve, given that it has, uh, the higher pack voltage initially. So far, the AB or the Signet 350 kilowatt unit has added the most power of this charging session between both adding to the actual battery and the thermal losses. Uh, and again, the gap is shrinking still. So 65% lower right. Uh, the middle session is at 70. That's done and complete. All the charge limits on the full recordings, those were set to 85%. So that's going to keep going here. Uh, and the, now the ABB Terra 184 is actually in the lead as far as power at 65%. Uh, and we only have a gap of 4% or 3% between the, all of these units. It's pretty crazy. Uh, if I was on a road trip, I'd probably be unplugging right about now at 70%. There's really no reason to go to that 85% because we're going to see the charge curve just drop dramatically above 70% here. And that's just the internal charge curve. That is not thermal limiting once we get to that point of 70%. Uh, and then it drops again once we get to 79 or 80 percent significantly. So really would recommend if you're on a road trip, unplug at 70 percent or 80 percent, just depending on how much charge you need. Uh, I would say drive slower rather than charging much deeper than this if you have to. Uh, now we're getting pretty similar charging across the board. Uh, and again, the charge percentage is nearly identical. The gap has closed. So 76%, uh, 
uh, 75%, 75%, 77%, 77%, really, I mean, within margin of error, I would say, or within battery temperature error, uh, if there was some environmental issues there. And you can see down to about 70 kilowatt, as I mentioned, it's just really not worth charging this deep if you're actually charging on a road trip. And another thing I noticed is that the charge estimate is just really all over the board. So if you look at the lower left of each charging screen, you'll see ends in so many minutes. And that just, that number is either staying constant, even as the clock is ticking on, uh, or it's even adding time, which is kind of crazy. Uh, still, the upper left, the Signet 350 kilowatt unit is continuing to lead as far as charge energy added. Uh, that's not necessarily the most indicative because of that variation, as I mentioned, in the same state of charge with such a large battery pack. Uh, but we're now within 1% across the board on three diff or four different charging hardwares at three different charging levels uh, as far as rated kilowatt output of the station itself. Uh, really just quite an interesting result not at all what i was expecting given my real world use of this on the road trip that i took if you haven't checked out those videos uh and we're going to be wrapping up here charging sessions very quickly they're all at 84 percent just absolutely crazy that these are all so close uh so lower right that just finished completed the fastest the delta unit and seconds later we have the signet upper right and then we have the ABB 175 and then the lower left the Terra 184 finishes just shortly after there. Whew, I need a breath. <laughs> wow you might need a breather after that one I know I certainly did uh, and after that horse race call out of all the different char charging sessions let me just wrap it up here a little bit with the data. So the Delta unit charged uh, in 54 minutes and 41 seconds. Uh, the Signet charged in 55 minutes, 13 seconds. The ABB 150 kilowatt labeled Elytri America, actually 175 kilowatt unit, uh, finished in 55 minutes, 13 seconds. And the ABB Terra 184 finished in 55 minutes and 30 seconds. That gives us a spread of a charging session between 5 and 85% of less than one minute. Uh, 49 seconds to be exact. Uh, and that is just not a result I expected at all. Uh, I don't know about you, but that is just very surprising to me. I expected a closer result than most would think. Um, however, I did think it would still be at least a few minutes, uh, like at least two or three, maybe even five to 10 minutes, uh, just given the higher peak power initially in the charging curve. But it turns out that actually doesn't really matter as much as you would think. Um, I calculated the average speed based on the charging completion time uh, as well as the kilowatt hour added. So now why does this make the Rivian charging curve so interesting? Well, it seems that Rivian has targeted uh, an average speed over the course of a charging session uh, rather than a specific charging curve. Uh, so it seems like it doesn't matter where it peaks at, it will still end up targeting the same average and it will actually end up driving uh, the middle of the curve down to, mate, or to meet that average, essentially, if the higher peak is there initially. Uh, whereas if the initial peak is the lower, it will actually hold it longer throughout the middle of the curve there. Uh, and given the way that this seems to be behaving, it actually seems like you want to have a lower power charger if you're unplugging earlier to some extent. Um, it's very tricky, but at the end of the day, it seems like the way that this Rivian charging curve is set up, at least in this current software version, which is, let's see here, because that is definitely relevant on a Rivian because it's probably going to change with future updates. We're on software version 2022.35.03. Uh, this is a, the latest update as of today, uh, October 21st, 2022. But Rivian has shown that they will change the charging curve with updates. Uh, this vehicle initially shipped with a 450 amp curve, then it went to 500, and then it changed the 500 amp curve. But this is the latest, as of recording at least. But I'm curious, uh, what do you guys think of this charging curve? If you're on a road trip, how are you going to use this information to your benefit? Are you just going to use whatever station's available? 
personally, if I think I'm not going to be charging only a little bit, so if I'm not doing a splash and dash at really low state of charge and only charging a little bit, I'm probably just going to use the 150 rated units uh, from Electrify America, assuming I'm using those on a road trip, because it seems like it just really doesn't matter. Uh, if you're only charging a brief bit, you're starting at low state of charge, you're unplugging it, say 30, 40%, then you actually would get some benefit of the higher power, the 350 rated uh, or any full 500 amp unit essentially, uh, because then it you're actually taking advantage of that higher peak power and your average is going to be really high. But for most casual road tripping, I would say just plug it in and don't think about it too much. And this really just comes down to my whole philosophy with EVs of drive more and worry less. Uh, the cars do so much to keep it an easy experience for you. They do the thermal management. Uh, they tell you when to charge or yeah, when to charge, how long to charge, all that kind of fun stuff. But anyway, uh, this was certainly an interesting video. These were not at all the results I expected. If you haven't already hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one and comment down below. What do you think? <laughs>